I run into you in the hallway and I say, I've been looking at scores for our class this semester and I notice that your team has 228 points so far this semester. How do you feel about that? Well, how do you feel about that? And more importantly, what information would you need to know how you should feel about that? For instance, maybe you want to be reminded, what's the total number of points possible? What's the maximum? And how is the lowest scoring group performing? What's the minimum in this data set? How are all of the groups doing overall? What's a typical or an average score? And are all of the groups performing at about the same level? Or are some groups racing ahead while others are lagging behind? If you had all of this information, you would much better be able to contextualize what your 228 points means compared to everyone else. I want to introduce you to a numeric summary and a graphic summary, both of which use the same data, and both of which are simple and straightforward to interpret. The numeric summary is called the five number summary, and the graph is called a box plot. And together, these two are excellent at summarizing one variable at a time. For instance, we could create a five number summary and box plot of all of the heights in our data set. Or we could split, subdivide, create two box plots side by side to compare between male and female height so that we can get subgroup comparisons within our overall data set. And additionally, box plots are excellent at identifying outliers, so they're very helpful with exploratory data analysis. Having all of this information would allow you to very clearly know how your group is doing compared with all the other groups. Therefore, we need to learn about the box plot and the five number summary. The five number summary is a set of descriptive statistics providing information about a data set. And it consists of the five most important sample percentiles. The minimum, which is the smallest number of the distribution, the first quartile, the second quartile, which is the 50th percentile or the median, the third quartile, and the maximum, which is the largest number in the distribution. The difference between the first quartile and the third quartile is the interquartile range, or the middle 50% of the scores. Let's look at this in a picture. Here we see a box plot being compared to a normal curve or perhaps a histogram. The box represents quartile one to quartile three. That is the interquartile range. The heavy line in the middle of the box is the median. And those whiskers, the lines that go out from the box, are 1.5 times the interquartile range, or half again the interquartile range. I'd like you to notice how that interquartile range compares to the normal curve, and how far out into the tails of the normal curve are the whiskers of the box plot. The box plot and the five number summary contain the same information. Let's start with that five number summary and a simple data set. In this data set, we have 10 numbers. To find the five number summary, we should first identify the median. That is the middle score in our data set. Because it falls between three and four, we take the average of those two numbers, making our median 3.5. Now that we've divided our data set into an upper and lower half, we could do that median split idea on the lower half and again on the upper half to identify the first and third quartiles. On the lower half of our distribution, the middle score is three, that's quartile one. And on the upper half of the distribution, the median split, the middle number would be a nine, that's quartile three. The minimum value in this data set is one, but the maximum value is an outlier. It is a 20. And as you can see, I have been adding something subtle in the background. These values can be used to create a box plot. The five number summary and the box plot are showing us the same information. 
let's drill down a little bit more about the qualities of that box plot. The box plot is sometimes called a box and whisker diagram because the shaded rectangle in the middle is the box and those lines sticking out from the box are the whiskers. The box plot is the graphic equivalent to a five number summary and can be split so that we could do comparisons between subgroups of the variables. Let's focus first on the box. The box is the shaded rectangle in the middle of the box plot. The heavy line in the middle of the box represents the median. If the data set was normally distributed, then the median would be in the exact middle of the box. But if the data set was right skewed, then the box would be shifted away from the skew and the median would be on the upper end of that box. The box ends show the upper and lower quartiles, Q1 and Q3. The length of the box or the sides would be the inner quartile range, the difference between quartile one and quartile three or the middle 50% of the distribution. But what about those whiskers? The length of the whiskers is determined by 1.5 times the interquartile range or the length of the box. The whiskers show the upper and lower limits of this data set and values outside of those whiskers will be marked with an asterisk indicating they are extreme values or outliers. Both outliers and extreme outliers can be indicated. Sometimes outliers are extreme scores, but they're still relatively part of the data set. At other times, we have an extreme outlier that indicates something is clearly wrong in that data set. That number either needs to be Windsorized back down into the rest of the data or perhaps excluded from our data set. The length of the whiskers shows the top or the bottom 25% of the scores in our data set. Let's look at this box plot and compare it to three distributions, one of which is normally distributed and two which are skewed. And let's see what happens to the shape of our box plot as the distribution of the data change. In the middle, we see a normally distributed histogram with a box plot that is beautifully balanced. It is very symmetrical. In the top left, we see a right skewed distribution. Remember that the skew is in the tail. This tail is pulled out to the right end. It is right skewed or positively skewed. Notice how the median has shifted to the left. Now in the lower left, we see a negatively skewed distribution. And notice how the box plot has shifted away from the skew, putting that box in the upper portion of our distribution, lining up that median with the highest point in the distribution of scores. And now that you know what a five number summary and a box plot are, let's learn how to create them. We're gonna create our five number summary and our box plot using statistical software.